Yo, what's up, YouTube? It's me, DeBolt the Bear. Hope everyone is doing well. We got a bit of a different video for everyone today. I had a request in one of my previous videos for some tips on how to play against the Xenomorph. But before we get into that, did you guys know that my goal is 1K by the end of the year? If you like the video and sub, I'd really appreciate it. It also helps me understand what all of you want to see more of. Back on topic. In this video, I'm going to go over just a few major things that can make going against Xenomorph much easier for you and will possibly help you last just a little bit longer in chase for your teammates. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Like I said, it's just a few little things that I put together with a friend in customs where we just kind of set things up in a way that you guys would understand. There's just a few things that you can do with turrets and in chase that would actually probably make you last a bit longer than the nor like the casual survivor doesn't last very long again like against xenomorph in chase mainly because they don't understand where turret placement should be and what not to do at pallets things like that there's a lot of counterplay to xenomorph but people didn't want to learn it at the time and so it has that negative stigma of Everybody just wants to go, go next against Xenomorph, or they hate Xenomorph. When in reality, Xenomorph actually has quite a few things that you can do against it. It's just, it takes setup. But, we're going to get into the video. I appreciate everybody, and I hope you enjoy this kind of change of pace. If you guys want to see more stuff like this, let me know, and I'm, I can think of things to put together. Or you can give me, give me recommendations on things to put together. But let's get into it. So one of the biggest counters you can have against Xenomorph is placing double turrets. As you saw in the clip, as I was rotating to the right out of the shack, I was immediately hit by a turret, broke it, but was still broken out. That was because the survivor placed another one at the left edge of the shack, make it so that it was a guaranteed breakout of power. This is probably the one that makes the most that takes the most coordination, but also has the most risk. Placing two turrets near each other hinders the amount of turrets you can have elsewhere on the map, but makes it so that in that instance, you'll knock them out of power without, without any problems. You'll mostly see this technique used by Swifts because of the communication they potentially have with one another. Keeping a track of your solo queue teammates or even ha just having a designated area where you can place two turrets consistently will really pay off. And oftentimes, the Xenomorph will have to either choose to become an M1 killer or to detach from that current chase. Odds are they're probably going to go for the uh, detaching from chase because it takes minimal time to get your power back. But if you want the best way to break the Xenomorph out of power, double turrets would be the best way. But it's arguably not the most realistic way in terms of solo queue and whatnot. But it is the most efficient way to break the Xenomorph out of power. All right, so that brings us to the next one, and this one's a don't. You don't want to do this. Camping pallets. I see it in a ton of my matches. Experienced survivors, inexperienced, intermediate, intermediate, all sorts. Um, camping pallets, it's not great. Xenomorph, along with a few other killers, can down you insanely fast if you don't play pallets correctly against her. Greening pallets is actually one of the best ways to play against her because then you're forcing the 50-50. When you camp the pallet, you're giving the Xenomorph plenty of time to react and fire a shot while you're in animation, making it feel less fair. I can't tell you how many free hits I've gotten from survivors that just camp pallets as I'm going to them just to pre-drop the pallet. That doesn't work. And depending on the loot, it could hurt you. Loops where even just a portion of the survivor's head is visible are where Xenomorph is the strongest. So keeping that pallet up to have mind games with, with really helps in keeping you alive. And don't be afraid to fake a pallet drop, stretch those loops out for longer. And if you do take a hit, make sure to rotate out of the loop. You really want to keep Xenomorph busy as long as possible because she benefits from ending chases fast. So the longer you loop her, the harder the match will be for her. And that's what you want at the end of the day. Your teammates will thank you. Uh, and you'll have a better chance of getting out. Everyone will. It's just don't camp pallets. It's the worst thing. I see it 
so much. It's the worst thing to do against Xenomorph because it literally is a free hit. And I don't know how true this is, but I feel like if you drop a pallet at a certain time when the Xenomorph launches their tail, I won't get stunned. I've been noticing it a lot more since the update to Unreal, and I don't know if that's intentional or not, but I'm sure you've seen it in my videos where I'm like running face first into a drop pallet while I'm shooting my tail and I still get the down. So just another reason not to camp the pallets. <laughs> Okay, so for the next one, we have another don't, and that is turrets near generators. This one's a huge one, not only because it's inefficient, but one of Xenomorph's strongest add-ons is solely reliant on you, the survivor, placing turrets near gens. The semiotic keyboard allows Xenomorph to see the progress of gens within 16 meters of a turret. That's nuts. And you know what? I always get value out of the perk when I run it. Sorry, not the perk, the uh, add-on. The problem is, survivors place turrets next to Jigens, which doesn't sound bad, but when you know how Zeno works, it's pretty bad. A station is usually always next to a gen. When uh, Xenomorph comes out of the tunnel, the turrets disable. It gives them a chance to insta-slap it and proceed with chase while the turret is on cooldown. This ties into the next tip as well, which is something you should be doing in the next one. You want to place turrets in areas that you can loop efficiently and ideally break the Xenomorph out of power. Now, that won't always be the case, but that's fine. What you need to do is you need to take the extra time. Place the turrets further and into loops. I understand the game is about being efficient, but the Xenomorph's chases are meant to be quick, right? So the survivor's gameplay kind of reflects that. Their gameplay loop is meant to be methodical, coordinated for this killer. So, placing turrets correctly will literally make the Xenomorph's life hell. There is so many times that I've had to break chase because of survivors placing turrets well. But there's also just as many times that survivors will place turrets next to generators. You are, I'm just letting you know now, you are not safe if you put a turret next to the generator. Yes, it'll buy you seconds out of chase but odds are i'm either gonna break it and go into the next chase or i'm gonna break it and go back after you and now you, you're down a turret so stop placing them next to gens i mean solely this is up to you guys i'm just giving you tips but and this, this only benefits me if you guys keep doing it All right, and that directly leads into the next one, which is a do, all right? And that's placing turrets in loops. After double turrets, this is the most ideal way to place turrets against Xenomorph. Now, I understand the loop in the clip wasn't exactly the best to showcase because of its height, but using, using it as an example of how you can rotate Xenomorph into a loop, forcing them to chase as an M1 or break the turret is just as effective here. Now, I did make the point that a couple seconds didn't matter when you set a turret next to the generator, but you flip that, it is absolutely important if you're already in chase. Seconds can cost you valuable gen time that you could be getting other survivors, all right? As you saw, I chose to break the turret to remain in power, right? Now, while I did that, the Dwight was able to make it to another tile completely. So seconds and chase is, are different from seconds getting off the generator. Seconds getting off the generator, I'm already slapping the turret and I'm just back in chase. You're going to go to a loop anyway, right? Now this one, it's just going to take forever because I'm not, I'm actively chasing you. And now you're making it so that you make it to another loop. You didn't use the pallet and I have to choose whether to continue chasing you or not. So this is how you should be thinking while playing against Xenomorph, you're thinking about the rotation. Get Xenomorph into the loop. Break the Xenomorph out of power. If not, force them to break the turret and rotate out to another tile. This makes it extremely hard to play against. Sometimes it may even make the Xenomorph break chase. 
if things aren't being done fast, the Xenomorph is suffering. If you guys take away anything from this video, I want you to take away that. Xenomorph is meant to end chases pretty quick. And if not, they need to leave the chases. That's why they have the tunnel system. Because you will always be able to find a survivor as Xenomorph. It's just committing to them or not. You don't want to go into a chase that's going to be massively long. I do it all the time just because I'm a brute force kind of player. But you don't want to do that as Xenomorph. You want to be chasing and ending chases quick. All right, this last one's not really required. Well, none of them are actually required, but it's less of a tip and more of just something fun, I think. And that's hiding turrets. It's more of an honorable mention to the last one in the clip. I'm not sure if you caught it, but the turret was placed in a bush, kind of out of sight as the survivor passed it, leaving me to make a quick choice of committing to the chase or break. So these quick choices, can often end up letting the survivors reach a destination, extending the chase. And as I've said multiple times, you don't want that as Xenomorph. Obviously, the blinking light and sounds can give away that the turret is there. But sometimes in the heat of a chase, you don't really acknowledge that it could be in the bush or hidden out of sight. I saved this one for last as, like I said, it's not as important the other ones as the other ones, but it's just a fun little trick that can catch the killer off guard and could sway the chase in your favor. Personally, I've been hit with a few turrets uh, hidden in bushes, and it, while it doesn't feel good, I have to laugh because I'm like, wow, I wasn't expecting that. And oftentimes, they're just like, it's the same kind of thing as the rotation in loops. Like, they rotate me through loops, and all of a sudden, I'm getting hit by a turret in a bush that I sometimes miss. So, it does work out sometimes in their favor. Overall, I'd say these are the biggest do's versus don'ts that I can offer to you guys now. But if you have any that you can think of, would like to add, or just have questions, feel free to send them in the comments below. As I said, this was requested by someone in the community, and I thought it was a great idea. I want us to enjoy and have fun going against killers, and knowing how to play against them can make them infinitely more fun to go against. If I can spread even a little insight on how players can play against Xenomorph, I achieved what I set out to do. Make sure to slap a like on the video, sub if you want. My goal is 1k by the end of the year. Also, hit the bell, then all. It'll notify you anytime I post a video, and you'll be able to see more of this kind of content. As always, stay safe, have a wonderful rest of your day, night, whatever time it is for you, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.